What's up, everybody? Don't mind me. I'm sucking on a uh, butterscotch candy. So, this video is actually probably going to end up being long, but last year, at least one person, if not a few, had asked me to do a video of all the books that I recommend, all the books and resources that I've used. Um, and so I finally have easy access to my books and I'm going through them and I just remind, just remembered something. Hold on one second. Okay. So, ugh, don't want to forget these two. Okay, so I'm finally going to do that. I'm finally going to go through a bunch of books. So let's start with three books that I do not recommend wasting your time and money on. So we'll start with, I'm going in chronological order of when I attempted them. C.S. Lewis. Now, first of all, let me just say, I've never been one to really read fiction. If I'm going to indulge in fiction, I'd rather watch it instead of read it. But someone recommended this um, years ago when I was in graduate school. C.S. Lewis, it's called The Great Divorce. And I don't even remember if I finished this or not because it was just so freaking convoluted and just, yeah. If I'm gonna sit down and actually read, no, I didn't finish it because I have, I have the, the, I didn't even finish it. I only read like a little bit. Um, if I'm gonna sit down and read, I better be able to glean some kind of wisdom or knowledge or something out of it. And so this was just, in my opinion, just absolute waste. So that's in my D commendation pile or whatever. Um, this book, John Eckhart. I'm really just not impressed with John Eckhart. I'm really not. Um, can't say I've checked him out too much, but I had two different people from two different like uh, churches, I guess you could say, recommend this book. It's Prayers That Rout Demons and Break Curses. And if you don't know what rout means, it means to uh, kind of like send them off on like... And uh, everyone was like, oh, you got to get this book, blah, blah, blah. I get the book. All it is, more or less. I mean, the, the, the actual prayers that are supposed to be so effective, all it is is scripture. That's it. It's just scripture. You have a Bible for that. You don't need someone else to reprint scripture. So I actually tried some stuff in here on myself and on my ex at the time really did nothing. So I consider this pretty much worthless. What else? Uh, another one I don't recommend. The Happy Intercessor by Benny Johnson, which is the wife of Bill Johnson, who is the head of Bethel Church, which we now know is a very questionable church, right? Back when I read this, I didn't know that at that point. Um, the takeaways that I got from it was that, you know, marijuana, if it's used to get high, is demonic. And I think she was saying something that was like slightly insightful about being an intercessor, um, kind of being tied to like being like what uh, contemporary lingo would call being an empath, you know, where you just pick up on other people's emotions and whatever, and that basically that's supposed to be like a indicator to you that you're supposed to pray for the person or something or whatever. But I read this in 2018. Man, so much has gone on in my life. But yeah, overall, like, eh, really wasn't impressed. And it was very poorly written um, in terms of, like, she would just jump from concept to concept and wouldn't really, like, link them. She wouldn't really 
like there was no continuity there was no flow from concept to concept it was very choppy so yeah okay so those three thumbs down okay um these this and uh well probably a handful of these i know i've mentioned before so this is this is a reference guide see it's got the little like keychain thing and you can you know um there's a book I have it over here. I never finished reading it or I never read it. I thought I had it over here. Oh yeah, right here. So there's a book and there's a reference guide. Um, I think I was skimming through the book and what I remember um, from it is that she was basically explaining the whole concept of like word curses and you know to be careful with how you phrase your communication which I've emphasized on this channel many many many, many times um, but really this this is very useful especially if you know that your purpose your calling is in the realm of inner healing deliverance integration all that stuff um, so it goes through uh, different like various body symptoms physical symptoms in the body and explains like the soul level uh, root to it and stuff like that so I do recommend that it's how about I tell you what it's called it's called feelings buried alive never die Carol K Truman and it's the reference guide that's what I do recommend so Good stuff. Um, I've mentioned this a bunch of times and I've had a lot of people give me flack about it, but I really don't care. Um, this is a dream interpretation book. Um, it's called The Divinity Code. Not The Da Vinci Code. The Divinity Code. Divinity comes from the word divine. Okay. Um, I know that doesn't mean it's divination either. For those of you who are just ignorant with words. Um, so the, the bulk of this really is an actual book where they go into teaching dream interpretation. To this day, I still haven't read that. But in the back of it, they have a glossary of things from dreams. And then there's also a name glossary of the meanings of names because that's also important for dream interpretation. So I very much do recommend this book, The Divinity Code. To Understanding Your Dreams and Visions by Adam F. Thompson and Adrienne, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, it's, it's, it's a male, Adrienne Beal, so I, I do recommend that. Alright, now, in no particular order, I've got a pile like this, so we're going to be here a while if you're interested. Um, and then i got to decide and pray about which one of these I'm keeping and whatnot and whatever. So, for those of you who come from dysfunctional families and have issues, which is most of us, right? If not all of us. Codependent no more. If you haven't heard of this, I'll be surprised, okay? This is like the number one top recommended book, self-help book, pretty much across the board regarding codependence. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best though. Somewhere in this pile is a better one that I will get to. But Codependent No More, How to Stop Controlling Others and Start Caring for Yourself by Melody BT. Um, I forget if it was this book or the other one. I think it might have been this book that uh, it was explaining how like if you're not comfortable with something, don't go through with it. Like, even though you're married, if, you're, if your spouse is being abusive to you and you don't feel comfortable having sex with your spouse because they're abusive to you, then you don't have to have sex with them. What a novel concept, right? Like, just whatever. So, if you're interested in, you know, dealing with your codependence, and by the way, again, codependence is technically witchcraft, okay? Witchcraft can be broken down into two categories. There is divination, which is where someone consciously, intentionally is doing spells and that kind of thing. Spell work. Um, and then there is domination. Domination is just control, okay? And um, 
both are control witchcraft the the essence of witchcraft is control which is why the bible says that it is as rebellion because if you're grasping at control you're not trusting god okay um but yeah if you're codependent and uh even if you have good intentions right so if you've got a spouse who's an alcoholic and you're dumping out that person's alcohol you may have good intentions but you're still trying to control that person and you're focused on that person instead of yourself and i i know because i used to be codependent um and uh yeah that falls under witchcraft technically so there's that what else we got here Mars and Venus on a Date by John Gray, Ph.D. Now, I don't know if he's officially a Christian or not, so a lot, of, most of these books, I haven't read them in years, so I'm a little rusty. Um, I don't know if he's Christian or not. If, he, if he's not officially Christian, I think he's, um, like, secretly closet Christian or whatever, but he explains... Uh, the male and female psyche as it uh, pertains to courtship um, and just and, and even post uh, wedding you know once you're married and all that um, so if you're interested in that it's a good easy uh, read um, and he kind of does hold up some Christian principles which is why I was saying I think he is Christian um, you know, how the man is ordained by God, basically, to be the pursuer, the initiator, so on and so forth. And how if a man is not pursuing a woman, then her perception of him will actually change because he's not making her feel desirable. Yada, yada, yada. So, very interesting. Read that a long time ago. Um, I read most of these a long time ago. The Amazing Discernment of Women by Gentizen Franklin. I later on found out that I guess he's a pastor. Um, again, I've, I read this at like the beginning of my walk so many years ago. Um, but I do remember that it just made so much sense. And, um, you know, women do have a particular uh, anointing regarding... I'm stuttering regarding discernment and he gives a lot of testimonies and examples in here of why a woman's discernment is definitely to be honored and trusted and um oh yeah so good book <laughs> all right captivating by john and stacy eldridge i own most of their books and i'm actually gonna be donating a few of them, I think. Um, but yeah, I own and have read most of their books. So this is the counterpart to, uh, I'm sure somewhere in this pile I have Wild at Heart. Um, so they, this book is about the heart of a woman. I think it even says that. Unveiling the mystery of a woman's soul. Okay. Um, it's just a really good read to help women under, uh, hi, hi, you guys, help women comprehend their own hearts. And it's also good for men to read to get insight as to what makes a woman's uh, heart tick. Okay, so there's that. Hey, cooks. Uh, John Eldridge, Moving Mountains. Praying with Passion, Confidence, and Authority. So for those of you who would like guidance about just your prayer life, how do you pray, you know? Um, how to pray, when to pray, what to pray. What I remember taking away from this book was, number one, um, to truly pray, you ask God what it is he wants you to pray, number one. And number two, um, you know, just in terms of interacting with uh, fellow Christians, you know, when someone brings up a prayer request or concern or something, you know, we often say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll pray for you. And unfortunately, we forget or whatever. And then technically, we make liars of ourselves. Um, and so he, I think he even has a chapter called like pray like right now. Um, yeah, chapter 10, pray now, exclamation point. And he basically just says, instead of saying, you know, oh I'll, oh, I'll pray for you, as in, like, at a later time, 
you pray right now this way you're praying and you don't have to have this like checklist in the back of your head and then if you forget about it and then and, and then remember later on feel guilty about it and then feel convicted that you lied or you know whatever so that's what I that's what I remember taking away from this book but I'm sure there's lots of other good stuff in here um like I said a lot of what John Eldridge has taught in his books is on point I just think that um over the years he's lost his way a little bit and whatever and I shared my testimony regarding all that a while back but so anyway that's the book on how to pray moving mountains by John Eldridge all right what do we got here um, the intimacy factor by Pia Melody she has two other books that are in this pile here they are let me see if I can pull them out without the Eiffel Tower falling over here all right so Let's just do all three of these books by her. Excuse me. All right. So, I'm going to rewind. Let's go to uh, Facing Codependence by Pia Melody. This is the codependent book that I do recommend. Like, better than the other one. Pia Melody. These three books by her, if you want self-help books, this is the way to go. Pia Melody, I'm telling you right now. Facing Codependence. Um what it is, where it comes from, and how it sabotages our lives. Um, I can't tell you that I remember specifically anything out of here because it's been so long, but I do know that it helped me a lot, um, which is why I went and checked out other books of hers, which were also very helpful. So there's Facing, Facing Codependence by Pia Melody with two L's, okay? Um, the next one is... Uh, Facing Love Addiction by Pia Melody. My aunt got me this as a gift um, years back when I was uh, <clears throat> married to my toxic abusive ex-husband. Uh, giving yourself the power to change the way you love. Okay, and in here, looks like I've got something in here. To, oh, yes, here we go. So in here, it shows you a diagram of the cycle between a love addict and a love avoidant, which ties into what's called attachment theory and so on and so forth. And I mean, when I read this, it was my relationship with my ex-husband to a T and I actually got him to read it and he said the same thing. Both of us were just amazed at like, oh my gosh, like this is our relationship to a freaking T. This is exactly what we're doing, you know? Um, so insightful just really really helpful you know if you're trying to deal with your junk if you especially if you're in some kind of toxic romantic relationship or you have a habit of getting into them this is the book this is the book okay um holy spirit's telling me to go into a little bit more uh so basically whatever issues that we have with our parents um and no i'm not going all freud on you but um, it, it comes down to what is known at, in psychology as attachment theory. And so anyway, we have whatever issues with our parents, and so we go and we try to resolve those issues with our parents with our romantic partner. And so we basically go, um, it's not like we consciously do it, but we are just automatically kind of drawn to, like a magnet, uh, people that will push our buttons people that will trigger us because we are hoping deep down that somehow some way a miracle is going to happen and that issue will be resolved. Um, and the truth is, is that bottom line, you have to go and get inner healing with the Trinity. You have to get your healing and deliverance and integration with God first before you try to have any relationship and you shouldn't be trying to have one because if and when you're meant to have one, God will bring you together with the right person because he picks your spouse, okay? So anyway, Facing Love Addiction by Pia Melody. Amazing book, very insightful, okay? And then the last book by her that I read is called The Intimacy Factor, uh, The Ground Rules for Overcoming the Obstacles to Truth, Respect, and Lasting Love. Um, what I remember of this book is that she basically opens up by explaining oh look at that look everybody here's a picture of me when I wasn't looking all washed up <laughs> um, what else we got in here huh. 
There's another picture of me. I don't know why these are in here. I think I think my ex had these had this book and that's and he had pictures of me. That's funny. What else we got? Anything? A magnetic bookmark. Cool. <laughs> I've had these books packed away for so long. Anyway, what what was I saying? Um well, there's something else in here. What was that? Okay, interesting. Um I remember she opens up in the first chapter and basically says, if you're not going to be honest with yourself, then don't even bother reading the rest of the book and don't even bother trying to read any self-help books or seeking any kind of knowledge or wisdom because bottom line, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to have any resolution if you're not willing to be honest with yourself. First and foremost, you have to be honest with yourself. And that's true. It's just a fundamental fact. Um... I don't remember much from the rest of it, but I do remember that it was extremely helpful and insightful. Uh, all three of her books. So that's The Intimacy Factor by Pia Melody. All right, what else we got? Uh, the Five Languages of Apology. Last year I did that video where I kind of uh, went over, what was it, the five different? Uh, yeah. Um, on my Google Drive, um, I typed up... Uh, a document regarding how to do a proper apology, which I, in my opinion, I think a proper apology is all five of the apology languages. Um, I'm sure people would argue with me on that, but I did do a video on this a, a, a while back, so if you just go search on my channel for apology, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, but I did type up a document. Um, there's another bookmark. Um, to give people guidance as to how to go about a proper apology. I don't think I've... Did I finish reading this book? I can never tell because sometimes I reread books and whatever. Anyway, I'm going to take the bookmark out. So that's that. Oh, excuse me. So it's uh, the five, five languages of apology. How to experience healing in all your relationships by Gary Chapman and Jennifer Thomas. All right, what do we got next? Um, All Things New by John Eldridge. This book is about, well, it says right here, Heaven, Earth, and the Restoration of Everything You Love. So, um, there is a verse in scripture that says uh, something about All Things New, and that's where he's getting the title from. Um, but this book is basically all about how heaven will be a renewed or restored earth, or or... Well, I guess that's, that's the right way to put it. Or a, a new earth, restored, new, renewed, new. Um, and he also, from what I remember of this book, he was also explaining and reminding us that scripture talks about, um, you know, God promises us rewards. Um, and so he's just kind of like punctuating certain things that I think a lot of people gloss over regarding the rest of eternity after this age, after this life. So if you're interested in that, it's called All Things New, John Eldridge. All right, what else we got? Here's another book by John Eldridge, Waking the Dead, The Glory of a Heart Fully Alive. Now... Again, I haven't read this in such a long time. And I don't... I can't honestly say that I remember much. But all I know is that his books were very foundational for me when I was a babe in Christ. And so I, I just... In general, I do recommend John Eldridge's books. They're just very foundational... Um, so if you're looking to just kind of like get into some Christian reading, John Eldridge is, is, is a great way to go. So, Waking the Dead. Let me see if I can get a summary on the back of the book here for you. Ugh. Waking the Dead will help us all find the life Christ promised. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time here. So if you're interested, you can go look this stuff up on, on, online. Okay. Uh, Bold Love by Dr. Dan Allender. This is a very old, uh, version of it. I think I, I got this used. Some more stuff in the books here. Um, so I actually scanned, I think, two chapters out of this book, and I have them. So if you want 
those uh, a couple of chapters out of this book, I can email them to you. And I think I put them on my Google Drive as well. But this book, oh, there's something else in the book here. A napkin. Um, this book is... The word pivotal comes to mind. Um, he starts off the book it, it, with very complex concepts and he talks about how, how human beings resent our own free will because it, it, free will is such a responsibility, you know, because if, if you make the wrong decision, who's responsible for that? You are, right? Um, and so he, he goes into this concept of how we try to kind of like shrug off our free will narcissists are, are known for that, right? They never own responsibility. Um, and then as the book goes on, he goes into explaining the, the I'm stuttering, the biblical definition of a fool, the, the biblical definition of an evil person. Um, and I think it's like the last three chapters of the book, which it's two of those that I actually scanned. Um, but it goes into explaining like how to deal with a fool and an evil person, um, also known as a narcissist or schizophrenic or etc. I've explained how all that is kind of like on a spectrum. He explains in here how there how a fool has has its own spectrum, an evil person has has its own spectrum, and they both are kind of like on a spectrum. And um, but yeah, um, but oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The most important thing to take away is that he defines what true love is, and and, and it's all. It's all being explained from scripture. That true love is meeting needs. And he goes into all these examples in scripture of Jesus where he met some, you know, certain people, what the uh, need that they, uh, that, that Jesus met was they needed healing, they needed food, you know, whatever. But some people, they needed a rebuke. They needed a swift kick in the butt, basically, right? They needed an, an, admonishment, a correction. Um, hence, you know, uh, Jesus himself even kind of lost his temper just as John the Baptist did and called people a brood of vipers, right? And so he explains that that's what true love is, is where you meet someone's need and that need may be discipline, correction, admonishment, right? Um, and he, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And he also explains that sometimes when you have someone who's a fool or an evil person, um, at a certain point, the best thing you can do to love yourself and to love that person is to excommunicate them. Because one, by excommunicating them, you are protecting yourself. You're, you're honoring and loving yourself and protecting yourself from the abuse because they're not excuse me, I am stuttering so bad. They are not repenting. But by excommunicating them, you're loving them because you are hopefully putting them in a position where they hit rock bottom and they finally let themselves feel the conviction and then have the best opportunity to repent. And if they repent, then you uh, reconcile with them. But he explains that it's a biblical principle that you are not to reconcile with someone who has not repented, okay? So this is extremely good good reading, good teaching, good doctrine. I recommend this book highly, 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 highly recommend. This is true Christianity right here, okay? So it's called Bold Love by Dr. Uh, Dan B. Allender. Um, this, the like subtitle is The Courageous Practice of Life's Ultimate Influence. Um, Oh, and, and it's the, the co-author is Dr. Tremper Longman III. Um, but yeah, really excellent book. Um, so that's that. Uh, Journey of Desire, Searching for the Life We've Only Dreamed of, John Eldridge. So as you can tell from the title, he goes into the, de the depths of the heart that God created and, you know, kind of like examines desire and w what do we do with it and blah 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 again I haven't read these books in so long but again it was very it was very foundational I think um I mean like general concepts that he has in his books is like he tells you not to kill your heart you know something that we do especially once we've been um hurt a lot disappointed a lot abused a lot is we will 
kind of make an agreement to resign and kill our heart, you know, kill our desires, quit all that, you know, and he, he reminds us that that's not God's will for us and so on and so forth. So anyway, the journey of desire, John Eldridge. Okay. Another John Eldridge book, the sacred romance drawing closer to the heart of God written by John Eldridge and his friend Brent Curtis. Um, this is, off the top of my head, I think I always kind of refer to this as like Christianity 101 for like babes in Christ. Um, he does a really good job of just explaining that Christianity and the world that we live in really is the greatest um, adventure and romance that anyone could ever live. You know, people get all swept up in like Lord of the Rings and things like that. And he, he references movies and that kind of stuff in his books and stuff. Um, but he says that, you know, what you're really longing for is God, you know, because, um, reality is that we are in a, an adventure. There is good and evil and there is a romance going on and, and, and he, he just unpacks all that kind of stuff. So if you're into like Lord of the Rings and all that kind of stuff, this is the book for you. Okay. Uh, John Eldridge, Wild at Heart. This is his like most famous best-selling book. I think pe most people have at least heard of this book. Um, so this is the counterpart to Captivating that he wrote with his wife. So this is about the heart of a man, what makes a man tick. It's good for men to read. Um, he goes into explaining how men will try to take their question to a woman to... Ah, uh, yes, Holy Spirit, that's right. Um, every man's question in his heart is, do I have what it takes and he tries to get that validation everywhere but God including from woman um, just like in Captivating they explain that a woman's question is you know am I beautiful am I desirable do you delight in me right and so in both of these books um, it's that's kind of delved into and, and explained how you know there, there's a healthy way that men and women can interact to kind of give each other a yes to each other's questions but ultimately we need to get that yes from God um, so anyway this is just about a, a man's heart and all that kind of stuff so good book um, okay the five love languages by Gary Chapman. It's the same guy who wrote the book about the five five languages of, of apology. He wrote that after he wrote this. Um, I think again, most Christians have probably heard about this. Um, and by the way, in both of these books, in the back of the book, they have a little like uh, evaluation assessment where you can figure out like what's your love language what's your apology language whatever um and all that but it's very you know it's it's one of those like surface level tools that can that can be helpful but is it gonna like solve all your problems no you have to get real healing for that but so it's a good little tool to put in your tool belt uh regarding just intimacy in general whether it's with a spouse your children friends whatever um even coworkers and bosses Okay, um, another book by John Eldridge, The Utter Relief of Holiness. He later on retitled this, and I forget what he titled it. I forget what the new title is now. Um, but this... So you know how I said the sacred romance is like Christianity 101 for babes in Christ? This gets more meatier. Um, it, this has more meat to it regarding like what is Christianity all about. Um, how God's goodness frees us from everything that plagues us. Um, he just talks, I mean, f from the title, you can see holiness, right? Again, holiness is to be separate, to be separated, um, to be set apart, right? God tells us in scripture, come out of her. Uh, we're, we're told in scripture not to conform to the ways of the world. If we are uh, friends with the world, we are at enmity with God, meaning we are, we are making ourselves enemies with God. Um, and so he just goes into um, explaining how like, uh, I guess like the like virtue of like living your life for God and being set apart and all that kind of stuff. So it's a good book. Um, the Way Out of the Wilderness. Learn how Bible heroes with feet of clay are models for your recovery. Earl R. Excuse me, Earl R. Henslin. Uh, 
and he's got a doctorate, whatever. Um, to every wounded heart, Jesus shows the ways out of the wilderness. So for those of you who are more of the mindset of like 12 step programs and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, I mean, the Christian walk, and this might be a, a novel concept to a lot of people, but the Christian walk is a walk of recovery, okay? We are all in recovery. It's not just, you know, the people who go to AA or NA or whatever, okay? Those 12 steps are something that all of us should be practicing and living by, okay? Um, so this book is just, um, again, I, I haven't read this in so long, but you know, it, it is, it's, it's about um, just recovery and just all that that goes into it, you know, that we have cycles and boundaries and triggers and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. There's some diagrams in here. Oh, there's another bookmark. On um, chapter six, healthy shame, toxic shame, we better know the difference. I would don't like how it's phrased healthy shame. I would say more so conviction, right? There's conviction. There's a, conviction comes from God and shame and condemnation comes from the enemy. Um, but this is written by a Christian. I Yeah, it has to be written by a Christian. Yeah. So, Christian book about recovery, the way out of the wilderness. Good book. Um, okay, what do we got here? Here we go. Healing Life's Hurts Through Theophostic Prayer. So, this is the book on... Theophostic. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll quickly go over it, but this is all stuff I've done on my channel last year. And for those of you who are new, there is a playlist. It's titled uh, Deliverance slash Healing slash Integration. If you're into all that, if you're looking for all that, which you should be, by the way, as a Christian, uh, go check it out. Um, but Theophostic is a a tool, a method, a modality of inner healing. And so you have the umbrella of inner healing. What are we at? 37 minutes. You have the umbrella or like the overarching category of inner healing. And underneath that, that umbrella, you have deliverance, you have integration, and you have the actual healing. Well, Theophostic is actual healing. And I will say this book is loaded with typos. Like I, I don't comprehend how people write a book and publish it without correcting typos. That just amazes me, but whatever. Um, but he explains the journey that God took him on and so on and so forth and how people who were, you know, victims of like rape and things like that, how they just couldn't get healing until God showed him how to develop th this tool, this method, and they finally got healing, okay? Um, basically, what Theophostic is, is... Yes, you do go and relive that memory, but only and only, 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 only with Jesus, okay? Um, and I would recommend being born again beforehand and all that, okay? But you invite Jesus into that memory, and then Jesus then changes the memory. Your experience of the memory actually changes. Um, and... Jesus will speak truth to you. He will point out any lies or vows that you partnered with in that moment of trauma. Um, and then from that moment on, whenever you recall that memory, you cannot recall that memory without Jesus being in it. And so he literally changes that memory. Um, so sometimes, you know, you can sit here and do all this other type, like you can come at stuff from different angles and, and I have been taught all those different angles, but sometimes what you just need is just that. You just need Jesus to come and change that memory. And that's what this book explains. So it's really good. So again, it's called Healing Life's Hurts Through Theophostic Prayer. Um, it's loaded with typos, but good book to read if you're interested in that. Uh, what do we got? The Discerner by James Gall, hearing, confirming, and acting on prophetic revelation, okay? Um, he also wrote The Seer, which, oh, that's right, I still have a box of books in my bedroom. I might have to go grab that. Um, I mean, he's, re he's written a bunch of books, but these are the two that I, uh, I, I got and read from him. Actually, I think I have a bunch from him, actually. 
Um, but I read this because I've been told and, and I just know that I have very strong discernment and after I read this it just confirmed it and everything and so if you're learning about discernment or you're seeking to develop your discernment and all of that this is a great book okay James Gall the discerner um, what is this waiting on God Cherry Hill so this was just this, this kind of has like bigger print and everything so it's um this was something that was like a little like Bible study thing or whatever and what I took away from this was that and, and I know a lot of people are going to argue on this but you know when Jesus and, and the disciples were crossing whatever body of water and the and Jesus fell asleep and the storm came and they woke him up and they had doubt and da 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 um it explains that like um, God, like sometimes you'll think it's the enemy that's creating or orchestrating a storm or the, or this, the perceived opposition, but really it's God. Um, and I know a lot of people argue on that and they say, oh, well, Jesus rebuked it. And so why would Jesus rebuke something that came from God? Well, you could argue about whether or not he actually truly rebuked it. He, he addressed it and said, peace comma, you know, like, just like when you say someone's name. So, um, when I've asked God whether or not that situation in scripture, whether God orchestrated it or not, he told me that he did orchestrate it. Um, God tests us. And so he will make you wait and he will test your faith and he, he will wait to come through at the last second to see, okay, where are you really at with your faith? Do you really trust me? And that's also how he stretches and grows your faith sometimes. Okay. And I, I can testify to this because I've gone through a lot of that and I'm going through it right now. I have to be out of here in a month and I've got no money, no job. I have no idea where I'm going, but I've, I've been through enough with God now that I'm just like, all right, Lord, whatever. I know you got it. Um, all right, here's another book by James Gall, The Lifestyle of a Prophet, okay? If you, so again, I'm just going to quickly go over, you don't decide to be a prophet. God ordains you as a prophet or whatever fivefold ministry office that, that he has, he has or he hasn't ordained you as. It's something that you are just, from conception, you hold that office. You are that office, okay? It's not something you decide. It's something that he reveals to you later on in your life when you're ready for it, okay? And then he confirms it and so on and so forth. So if you are wondering um, or, or you think God has been telling you that you are a prophet, this is a good handbook or manual to kind of get you going, okay? The Lifestyle of a Prophet uh, by James Gall. Um, what do we got here? Purpose Awakening by Torrey Roberts. Now, he this is one of his lesser known books. He's more so known for some other book, which was all about like inner healing. But that book was all like surface level as far as I was concerned. It was it had nothing to really offer me because I'd already been there, done that. But I did read Purpose Awakening um, and I found it very helpful at that point in my life. So if you don't know what your purpose is, okay, you need to figure it out because we're in the tribulation and you need to be, you know, uh, serving it. You, you Whatever your purpose is, it, it's all hands on deck, you know? Like, so this is a good book. If, if you're a babe in Christ or if, if, or if you just don't know what your purpose is, this is a good book to read, Purpose Awakening by Torrey Roberts, okay? Um, I've shared this book before. Um, my ex actually gave this to me. 25 quote-unquote forbidden cures uncensored health you can have today volume 2 alliance for advanced health so in this book they talk about how mammograms are bad for your health they talk about uh off the top of my head like how omega-7 can actually help you burn i think it's brown fat just all kinds of little interesting health things you know um so there's that i'm pretty sure i've mentioned that before um, Splunkna, so again, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna take this, this time right now. So, I know I have a group of haters who mess with me, who put thumbs down, and, and, and I do believe that YouTube just, um, plays with my likes and dislikes and, um, whatever, but, um, if, so, part of the reason why I talk about myself being a prophet and how I lead by example and all of that is because 
I've kind of had a sense, and now I'm getting more confirmation on it, that the Lord has people who are prophetesses and who are the same type of prophetess that I am, which is a counselor prophetess and or a proclaim God's heart standards prophetess, or both like I am, he has them drawn to me for me to mentor them, okay? So anyway, if you are called to inner healing, deliverance, integration, all of that, then I want you to go and find the playlist where I read this entire book over the span of, I think, 13 videos, or get the book for yourself. And then once you've read the book, email me, and uh, we can go from there uh, in, in terms of me training you and teaching you because God has told me at this point, um, I mean, he told me a while back, but at this point, I'm not afraid anymore to just say it, but um, God is having me revamp this because the woman that he had develop it uh, just like Saul did not steward it the way he was supposed to. Um, and so, um, he's having me revamp it the way he wants it and, you know, basically teach people for free and everything when she's charging outrageous amounts to train people and everything. Um, so this is a book, um, Splunkna. It's, it's a Greek word. Uh, it means like the guts or bowels of something, um, but it's all about... Um, it's, it's a tool that God gave to the body of Christ that should be more well known. I'm not going to go on too much more about this, but if you're interested in inner healing and deliverance and all that, read this book and then email me. Okay. Um, it didn't start with you by Mark Wolin. Um, I think he has some videos on, on YouTube. Um, I, I, I never finished reading this book, um, but he talks about epigenetics, and uh, there's even, I think he even quotes the Bible at the beginning of one of the chapters, or in the chapters, but it's that verse that says that the, the children or, or the grandchildren's teeth are set on, it, set on edge. Um, so it's basically just, so our DNA has a spiritual component to it. And a lot of people don't, don't really realize that. And that's how there can be generational curses and so on and so forth. But if justice is not served, then that will kind of carry down through the generations that there needs to be justice served. And so he gives examples in here about how maybe a grandfather or great-grandfather committed murder but got away with it. And so now the grandchild or great-grandchild is now being put in jail for something that they didn't do because the... the justice was was never served and so on and so forth and it just it's very fascinating stuff but um but sometimes some of the examples that he cited just didn't make sense to me because he was talking about like something happening with an uncle and then like the the nephew and like in terms of like following the actual bloodline that didn't make sense to me so that's, that's why i kind of no actually that's not why i stopped reading it um it was getting into some stuff regarding dealing with with mothers, and that's why, that's why I stopped, um, so, all right, anyway, so that's that, um, what else we got here, okay, so this is a book that one of my, whoop, there went the pile, um, anyway, someone had, uh, I think they bought me this book, yeah, it's called Broken Children, Grown Up Pain, Understanding the Effects of Your Wounded Past. Um, when I read this book, it was very exciting to me. It gave me hope for my ex and I, but <laughs> I had him buy the book to this day. He probably still hasn't read it, whatever. Um, but it gives a testimony of this, this married couple. The guy was a narcissist, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, they got divorced and then God, um, I think, I think he almost went to jail for murder or something, and God said to him, like, you don't, you have an unteachable heart, and so he actually allowed the conviction to hit him, and he r repented, and then he ended up, you know, years later, remarrying his original wife, and they ended up starting a ministry together for helping married couples and, and all that kind of stuff and everything, um, and so, I, again, it's been, it's been a few, uh, years since I've read it, but I know 
that it was very insightful. Um, it has some diagrams in it and stuff and whatever. So again, if you're into all that recovery, inner healing, yada, 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 good book. So again, it's called Broken Children, Grown Up Pain by Paul Hegstrom. Okay, what else we got here? Okay, this is a book from when I was in graduate school. It's called Nurture Shock by Poe Bronson and Ashley Merriman. Uh, and it, the subtitle is New Thinking About Children. And it just goes into some concepts about, like, you know, the, uh, the norms that are set. Like, basically how children learn things even when you're not intentionally trying to teach them something. And so they can learn, like, something that I remember reading about in here was how like um the children learned that like lying is okay or lying's or, or lying is okay in certain situations or whatever and just it's all about parenting so if you are a parent or well I'll just say that again we're in the end time well no we're in the tribulation Jesus said woe to those nursing babes so if you haven't conceived children at this point please don't for your own sake and for their sake we're, we're heading into famine there's gonna be zombies and werewolves and all kinds of crazy crap going on you don't want another mouth to feed and you don't want to have the emotional pain of seeing anything happen to your children yada 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 but if you are a parent already good book regarding parenting and how to raise your kids okay uh, safe people this is an old self-help book by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. Um, say, okay, how to find relationships that are good for you and avoid those that aren't. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, if you keep being attracted to the wrong kind of people that are abusive and whatnot, this is a good book for you to read. Um, these two Christian authors also wrote a book called Boundaries. I no longer have that book because my lovely ex decided to rip it in half one day in a fit of rage. Um, but those two books by these two Christian authors are, um, good authors for, you know, uh, if you're a babe in Christ or if you're looking for inner healing and, and just trying to fix all, all your junk and all that. Good stuff. Okay. All right. What do we got? Hmm. Yes, okay. The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by John Gottman and Nan Silver. So, John Gottman, he's the guy that I've mentioned on my channel who has some ridiculous uh, success rate for predicting who will get divorced and who won't and all that kind of stuff. Um, he really does have it down to a science, so to speak. Um, and so he wrote a book about, you know, how to make your marriage work, so... Pretty self-explanatory. If you want your marriage to work, this is a good book to read, okay? Um, and I forgot that I have a few books in a box in my bedroom. We're at 52 minutes. Let me go grab that real quick. <sighs> All right, a few more to go here. Okay. Okay, again, John Eckhart. I'm not impressed. So, somebody on YouTube mentioned this book, Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. Now, I don't, I, I doubt I read the whole thing, but from what I remember of just skimming through it or whatever, nothing really impressed me. There was nothing new. There was nothing that I just... To me, it was just common sense, like, surface-level kind of stuff. But to each their own. Whatever. Um, okay, here's another James Gall book. The Lifestyle of a Watchman. Okay. So, pretty self-explanatory. Um, Pigs in the Parlor. I've mentioned this multiple times on this channel. Um, the Practical Guide to Deliverance by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond, who are now deceased. They were a married couple, um, and they... Their ministry was deliverance and they share in here a lot of revelations and uh, truths and so forth um, and in the back of the book they do have a little I don't know what you would call it um, 
a glossary of sorts of different categories of demons and so forth. And they also explain about schizophrenia and yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, common demon groupings. Okay. So again, if you're called to any kind of deliverance, inner healing, all that, this is a good book to have. Okay. Um, this book, this book I was not really impressed with. I mean, I, I didn't really read it, but, um, Illustrated Dictionary of Dream Symbols by Dr. Joe Iboji. Um, I haven't really been impressed with this much. The, uh, the glossary in the back really hasn't been helpful, so there's my thoughts on that. Ah, okay, I know I've mentioned this a million times. The Seer by James Gall, okay? This explains that the office of prophet is under the umbrella of being a seer. If you are a seer, you are a prophet. If you are a prophet, you are not necessarily a seer, okay? Um, the subtitle is the, Prof the Prophetic Power of Visions, Dreams, and Open Heavens. Um, in this book, he does explain the different types of office of prophet. I did a video a while back where I shared stuff out of both of these books, I'll get to this in a second, um, about, you know, wh ha what makes someone a prophet and the different types of office of prophet and so on and so forth. So if you just go search my videos for the word prophet, um, you'll, you'll find that. But uh, this is very important. If you believe that you are a seer or a prophet, this is the book to read, okay? Um, and then this book I've also mentioned, so this is also in that, that video I did, Basic Training for the Prophetic Ministry by Chris Volatin. And yes, I think he's part of Bethel or was part of Bethel, but again, we are told to test everything and keep what is good, okay? Um, so in this book, um, he has a little chart, which is what I showed on, in, in that video. I don't know if I can find it. But in the chart, he makes the distinction between the gift of of prophecy, which is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the office of prophet. And, oh, here it is, yeah. So, there's a little chart, I don't know if you can see that, where he makes that distinction and so forth. Um, so that's helpful if you believe you are a prophet, or are wondering. Um, I've shared this before on this channel. How to Minister to Specific Diseases, Healing Rooms, Spokane, Washington. So this is kind of like a spiritual DSM. Um, lots of different like conditions and what the spiritual root is and how to pray for it and whatever. And, you know, um, this may or may not work because it, it's deeper than that. Um, but hey, you know, it's worth a shot, you know. So, and then what else do I have in here? Okay, I've shared this on my channel before. So this is Rob Skiba's ow, um, publication. <sighs> Genesis and the synchronized, biblically endorsed, extra-biblical texts. And it has um, the book of Genesis. It has First Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees in it. And from his research, those are the, um, the ones that he has... Uh, that he feels confident are definitely from God. Um, I guess there's there's a second book of Enoch, and he says that he doesn't think that that's from God. Um, so, if you're interested, that's out there. Um, and then, again, for those of you who might be um, interested or called regarding inner healing, deliverance, and so forth, um, there is... Sozo. Now, Sozo, yes, it, it, it comes from Bethel Church. But again, test everything and keep what is good. This is the, the advanced um, one, and I think I have the basic one over there somewhere. Um, there are just certain tools in here and certain insights in here that are true, okay? Um, no, it's not New Age and it's not witchcraft, okay? Um, and if you go listen to me read this book or go read this book for yourself, you'll learn exactly where that spiritual boundary is as to what makes something New Age or... or witchcraft. It's, it's it's not a matter of doing a certain thing. It's a matter of who you're seeking as the source, whether you're seeking special knowledge or special power, um, so on and so forth. Okay. So 
think that's everything and we were just shy of an hour. All right, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out in the comments or email and uh, I think that's it. I bless you all in Jesus' name.